Welcome to whoever is watching this video. Today we are going to start up takeoff with the Caronado ATR 72500. Now, first of all, I'm going to get the flight plan done out of the way. So I'm using Simbrief. Let's drag this tab over so you can see it. So today we're going to be going from Dublin to Edinburgh. ATR 72500. The climb profile is already set to 170 knots. Um, that's the registration. That's all right. That's okay. The schedule time is roughly an hour and 25. Departure runway 28. Arrival is 24. I checked that on flight radar. So, passengers. So, the aircraft will take 68. So, I'm going to put 55 in it. Cargo. No. Zero. Leave that, the rest of it. You can see here that would be the Rotev 1 Bravo departure runway 28, climb to Rotev, Papa 600 Tunzo, and it would be the Tunzo 1 Echo arrival for runway 24. You can see the route here. So I'm going to generate this. And I'll be flying on IVAO. Uh, network. So what I can do is I can go down here. It has all the different flight plans and uh, formats you can download. So I'm using uh, Altitude. It's basically you have the f four networks here. So if I click IVM or Prefile, it'll bring up the flight plan page. See my call sign, Shamrock Five Echo Delta. AT75, Dublin departure, flight level 210. Actually, I'm going to check that. The normal flight goes at 17. Okay, we're going to change that to 190. Flight plan's fine. Echo Golf Papa Hotel is Edinburgh. Our alternate is going to be Glasgow. I'm going to put in the second one. I'm going to put in London. Oh, sorry, Belfast City. Find the V8. Turn up virtual. Okay, it's all fine. 55. Submit the flight plan. You can see the green one is the active one, right? So, if I go here, start this up. Print the call sign. Don't change this to eighty seventy five. Garlingus. Leave them all checked off. Connect. There you go. The flight plan automatically populates up the top here, as you can see. Oh, sorry, <laughs> as you can see. So I'll bring that over out of the way. Set this up as well. So I'll just fill this out.
I should have done this before I started the video, but sure, it is what it is. Okay, so, let's start up Active Sky. Right, so, let's get started, okay? So, the ATR does not have a GPU or APU auxiliary power unit. So, there is what's called hotel mode, okay? So, w what that it means is that uses engine 2 as the uh, power generation for the aircraft. Because if you take time to do everything on the batteries batteries are going to die and you have to reload the sim because th there's no way to recharge your batteries as well unless someone can tell me otherwise in the comments below okay so first of all we're going to go to the overhead panel and get this view so you can see it properly uh, let's see, overhead there right so we have all the different uh, different parts of the overhead panel okay you have the the fuel pumps, stores, flight controls, calls, all this on this side. You have the um, electrical power, engine start switches in the middle. You have the prop brake, which we will be using for the hotel mode. These are all the lights, beacon, nav, strobe, logo, and then your takeoff landing lights. This panel here will be for the hydraulic uh, electrical power, uh, your probes, anti-ice if required, de-icing, and then you have uh, the seatbelt signs and the emergency lights. On this side, then you have the oxygen, the um, air air bleeds packs, all on the right hand side. Similar to most aircraft, have a similar configurations. Um, so we're gonna so the battery switch here. We're gonna switch to on. Okay, so that's what we have on there. Uh, fun fact here, see the landing gear? Looks a bit like the, what you'd see on the A320. Because the ATR was, is French. It was built by the French. Okay, so we're going to go back to the cockpit mode. So basically, what we're going to do with the hotel mode is... Okay, so the battery is on. And we're going to come down here to the throttle levers. Make sure that the... This uh, shaded uh, lever here. That's the prop brake. Make sure that is in, that's in the down position. Here you have the hydraulic switch, the parking hydraulic auxiliary pump. So you want to click that to the on position. So you see it says on. The, uh, so then we're going to come up to the overhead panel again. And you see the prop brake here. So we're going to pop that over to, pop that up to on. Right, so that's going, that's so all you can see prop brake is in blue. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the engine 2 pump to on. Then we're going to go up to the, over to the engine start. 
and put it down to leave it down to A and B. And then we're gonna start. As you can see here, the clock down near the bottom, you can see once it hits 12, or 11.9 I should say, uh, pop the right angle up to switch up to FTR. You can see the engine spooling up here. Now you can see the torque here is zero. And this one of these two are zero, okay? That means that the prop brake is on. Maybe the engine roaring up there now. So we go to the outside view. You can see that the propeller is not turning. But the engine is on supplying power to the aircraft. Okay, so that's for as far as we go on power generation for now. Okay, you can see down here that the ignition switches are on and the prop brake is set. Okay, so we're gonna go down and we're gonna have a look at the uh, the FMC. So let's bring up on the page here. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go to position in it, so we're going to click on that. We're going to print Dublin, so Echo India Delta Whiskey, the airport. Then we're going to click on flight plan, which will bring us to the next page. You'll see Dublin's already input, so we just need to print Echo Golf Papa Hotel. And you know, alternate. Uh, So once you put in your, your origin, your destination, and your alternate, you go down and you click on the departure arrival page, DPAOR. So we want to click on Dublin departure. Runway is 28. And then we're going to go down to the route of one Bravo. So we go next. Next, and next again. Right, so the one rotate from Bravo, there's no transition, so we're just going to execute that. And you can see there, so it brings us up to Rotev. Right, so we're going to, let's see, there's this one. So Rotev is a force waypoint, so we're going to say Rotev here, Rotev in here, as a force waypoint. So we go next, and put in pop 600, should work now, there you go. So just refresh that again, when you put in your right, uh, departure, take your force waypoint, Rotev, you put it in here, the two, so that's telling the waypoint that you've taken off on the, the road tab, you'll be flying to road tab, and that's your first waypoint. So then when you click on the next screen on your flight plan, you're able to put in the the, the first uh, uh, air, airway, which is probably 600, and then we are flying to tons of Okay, so Almost like you're on a with a few legs or a few um, waypoints in your aircraft, you can, you can usually wait till you're in the air to bring the arrival. But I'm just going to do it now. So the arrival is going to be ILS when we two four. That's tons of one echo arrival. Now before I execute that, I'm going to just check. 
I'm waiting to just bring this over here so you can see it. So, flights, new flight, font sim brief. Right, there's our flight. Let's make sure that everything is correct. Bravo. The one Bravo is for an ATR, so you can see that you, after you take off, before you even get to the end of the room where you head, you turn straight away. If I had to click the one Alpha, it would go out to Oscar Echo, which would be the first waypoint, which is the outer marker. And then you turn north, which would be more for jets. So I'm going to stick with the one Bravo because obviously it's a uh, prop. So the arrival is runway ILS 24. So I'm actually going to just put it. So there's a tons of one Echo, so let's have a look at that. Right, so it has vectors there, right? So what we're going to do is I'm just going to bring up the charts for Edinburgh. Have a look at the arrival. So you can see there, runway 24, so cap 23 ILS. Hmm. Okay, so we're going to use the uh, the TLA transition. As you can see here, you fly up here, past TLA, and you come in onto the uh, glide. Turn and turn onto the glide. Whether if you just do the EDI, you fly up over the airport and then loop back around. So we're just going to use that waypoint there. So you can see if we do put that, uh, if we exit that and put that in here. So ILS24, the TLA transition. There you go. Now another neat thing is if you want to check the waypoints in your FMC after doing that, you can click on that and go show waypoints. And you'll just see TLA, Delta 028 X-ray and, and so forth. So if I go in here, execute this. Down through the legs, you can see DLA, and there's your waypoints. And to the center fix then. So again, in, um, if you're using Navigraph, if you're using Avalia Soft, it's a, it's a similar um, function as far as I'm aware from seeing videos. But I'm using the uh, Navigraph charts. So you click on the approach that you've after inputting up here. You click on show waypoints labels. TLA, Delta 028 X ray, 104 Lima, 080 Lima, and then Charlie India 24. So if you go to your waypoints there, you see TLA. 28 X ray, 104 Lima, 080 Lima, and Charlie Indy 24. So you know that it's, it's right. Now, the flight we're doing today is we're going to flight level 190. Okay. So you can see here after Rotev, it goes 25,000 automatically. So basically, what we're going to do is. We're saying 750 here as well. That's well, yeah, we are taking off. It's 18 miles, so we're going to put. Rotev. Then we're gonna do one nine zero. So the forward the forward slash one nineteen thousand. Put it in there, and then click it again to bring it down. Bring it down. Now the top of the descent will be between Tunzo and TLA. So because the TLA restriction is six thousand feet. So because there's 70 miles between Tonzo and TLA, the descent profile should be able to accept that. So we'll leave that page on legs. Okay, so that's the um, the flight plan done. So we're going to come down here. We want to have the map displaying the correct information here as well. So you're going to come over to this panel here on the left hand side. What you're going to do is you're going to click on map. Make sure it has DTRK up here in the corner of the, the screen, because the other one is a uh, course, which is you'll be your, you'll be doing for your ILS later on. So turn it back to map. Sorry, yeah. Oh no, there we go. Right, map. Right, you can't see anything on the map now because of the way we're facing. Um, full art. Leave on that mark for now. Right, 
Now to control the, the, the range of the map, it's just a screen above the uh, FMC, to the right of the FMC. So the up and down arrows will be your range. So we're going to have a look at the fuel, right? So same brief is telling me that the fuel we're using today, the block fuel will be 3,499 pounds. Now just let me confirm that that's pounds. Yeah, so 3,500 pounds will be the block fuel. So I'm just going to change this uh, in the screen. As you can see here, so the aircraft full can take 10,900 pounds, so if we just for see what this does, 50%. Okay, so if we put 40% in each tank, that gives us 4,000, so we need 25. Okay, we'll leave it at 40. A little bit extra. It's 4,400, that's fine. You can see here, it's gas, it, tells, it says kilos here. The only way to change it is pounds. So you can see the left engine is using some a little tiny bit more because it's used the hotel mode obviously uses fuel because the engine is on. Okay, so I'm going to start up a program that we're only started using called Peace ACX. Okay, so it simulates cabin crew and passengers. So we're gonna put Echo Golf Papa oh no. W Echo Golf Papa Hotel. Flight number is three two three two five zero. Cruise altitude nineteen thousand feet. Flight time will be one then time of the takeoff will be 15 minutes. Passenger count will be full. Oh, sorry, pick the aircraft first. 85. I'm only going to have 38 of the 50, 40 of the 55 turning up. Next. So, no meals, but you can get snacks and drinks on board. With them blanks of start. See here, you can go to left boarding, La uh, loads in the front to the back. So you can scroll down, see not on aircraft. So you can see the status. So you go back till you click on the last person's seatbelt. So you can see seatbelt on, not on the aircraft that'll change seatbelt. So you can see that everyone's getting in an order. So I'll let them load, I'll be back in a moment. Gentlemen, I would love to welcome you aboard our flight. When you find your seat, please be sure to place your larger carry-on items in the overhead bins and smaller items underneath the seat in front of you. Unless you're in a front row, please place all of your items in the overhead bins. If you have any trouble finding a location for your carry-on items, please let a flight attendant know and we would be happy to assist you. 
If the overhead bin is full, please make sure you close it as a courtesy to other passengers. Please double check that all your items are put away so that the aisle is clear and other passengers can make their way to their seats. If you're in an emergency exit row, please read the exit seating responsibilities in the card in the seat back in front of you. If you're not able to comply with these actions, please let a flight attendant know so that way you can be received. You are free to use your portable electronic devices during the boarding process. We ask that larger electronic devices are stowed once we depart from the gate. Thank you and welcome aboard. Okay, so two things to keep in mind, which I made a mistake and forgot to do. Uh, because you're using the engine as hotel mode, you have to start GSX if you use GSX before you start the hotel mode. So, if I go GSX. Sorry. Go show, let's see. You need to stop engines to request ground services. So, before you do. If you want to we are use ready to go when you are. Hotel mode. Good morning, hotel mode, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 3250. Our flight time will be roughly one hour and 15 minutes. Now that the cabin door is closed, please make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your large devices are now shut down and stowed. Please fasten your seatbelt and make sure that all tray tables and seat backs are in a full upright and locked position for departure. Cabin crew, secure doors for departure. Shift five. Yeah, shift to five. Maybe the doors are on it. Close the doors. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the front of the aircraft for a safety demonstration. Okay. When the seatbelt so light is on, please make the, sure that your seatbelt is fastened low anymore. and tight across your lap. So we're just gonna to fasten, insert the metal fittings that, into one another. Switch it off. Tighten by pulling on the loose end of the strap. Make sure you have to release your, your seatbelt with the upper portion of the buckle. Make sure you In the event that the seatbelt light is not on, we suggest that you keep your Felt fastened in case of unexpected turbulence. There are several emergency exits on this aircraft. Please take a few moments now to locate your nearest exit. So in some one cases, one your nearest feather. exit may be behind you. If we need to evacuate the aircraft, floor level lighting will okay, guide you so towards the exit. To, uh, turn in the event the of a decompression, an oxygen mask will drop in front of you. To start the, the flow of oxygen, so pull the mask one. towards you. Place it firmly over your nose and mouth. Secure the elastic band behind your head. Tighten the straps if necessary and breathe normally. Although the bag does not inflate, oxygen is flowing to the mask. If you are traveling with a child or someone who requires assistance, secure your mask on first and then assist others. Keep your mask on until a member of the crew advises you it is safe to remove it. In the unlikely event of a water landing, a life vest is located in a pouch under your seat or between the armrests. When instructed to do so, open the plastic pouch and remove the vest. Flip it over your head. Wrap the straps around your waist and buckle at the front. Pull the straps to tighten. To inflate the vest, pull firmly okay, on the red cord only when exiting the uh, aircraft. Settled, if it doesn't inflate also, automatically, you may blow into the mouthpiece for a manual inflation. This vest is equipped with a whistle and a light. If you need to, your seat cushion can be used as a secondary emergency device. Please make sure to exit the aircraft as soon as possible and leave your belongings. Okay. Please securely stow your personal items. Make sure because your seatbelts are fastened and seat bags and tray tables are in their full upright position. We remind you that this is a non-smoking flight. Tampering with, disabling, or destroying the smoke detectors located in the laboratories so is prohibited by law. All of this information and more can be found in the safety card on. located in the seat back in so front of you. We suggest reading this and letting a cabin right member know if you have any questions. So Thank you for flying with on. us again, so and we hope you enjoy your flight. You make sure you turn on. So, turn on. Switch this back to the top. Okay, so on my trolley pumps, generator pumps, heat, probe heats, these are okay, they're heat on, signs on, now so oxygen supply on, that on, fans on, packs but on, the engine will not start with the packs on, so we turn them on after the engine has started. So, White, white lights left on, so that means everything is on and running. Okay, so the two engine switches are in auto. Bus lever lock off. Engines idle. Oops, the flaps down. Oops, it's only two positions. We're also going to make sure that our. I'm going to stop that pushback. Yeah, 
for us. Make sure the power management switch now, these are really important, okay? Because these are going to manage your okay, speed and climb. Okay? So basically, they tilt the prop torque. Because we're going to be climbing at a, a rate based on the speed and not the vertical vertical uh, speed. So we're going to be going by our indicated airspeed, IAS. So our indicated airspeed is going to be 170. Right. So after takeoff, I'm going to switch to switch to climb. You can see here in the engines uh, the different. CT actually. Going to go to the panel here. The cabin is ready. Thanks, love. Now, so the HLD is leave that there and just make sure these are turned on. Okay, the switch here, we're going to put the altitude up, flight level 190. Hit nav, so you'll see L nav is here. IAS, click on that. I'm going to set that to 170. The aircraft will climb to maintain that speed. When climbing, it'll maintain that speed, so we'll give you your climb automatically. So we're going to set that to 170. You can do 190 as well, but at the moment, we're going to set it to 170. Right, so. We are ready to taxi. Studios Dublin for P3D version 4.5 and the Preel Soft Dublin uh, scenery, which is quite accurate. See my house on it. See the new tower, also uh, modeled, and some of the new one that they built. There's also modeling in Paris. Probably a good So while we're getting close, I am going to.
uh, these two screens is Shift F1, uh, sorry, Shift 1. You can see here the takeoff is an immediate right one after departure. See here that the aircraft will attempt to will fly at a rate that will keep the speed of the aircraft at 180. So I'm now going to just turn that on to cruise mode now. So I climb out. speed up, drop to climb, until it gets to 190, and you can see here then it will adjust the climb then, to keep 190 knots on the climb, to fly the 190 here. So you can see up here, let's go the map. Okay, we've taken off from Dublin, it's an immediate right turn to the north from Rotev from Bravo to Rotev. Let's see we push back. Uh we should have if I had a push back would have passed back onto this this taxiway here and then straight out, but ah well. So for, so far that is it for this part of the, 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 the video. What's going to happen is now I get to flight level 100. I'm going to knock off my uh, takeoff lights. Leave the other ones on. Seatbelt signs will be off after 2-0. And then we get to climbing. I'm going to switch. We get to our, cli uh, or, sorry, our final altitude. Uh, and let's turn the switch to cruise. Okay, so you will join me for part Ladies two. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now passed 10,000 feet, so you may turn on larger portable electronic devices. This is also a reminder to please keep your seatbelt fastened throughout the duration of the flight and do not form a line near the laboratory. Okay, so it, it will climb up. 90 knots to 190 and then what I'll do is report to the cruise uh, switch and it will speed up to um, 
to manage speed um, until our descent. So, 